everything we do is about engaging girls like this and, and girls who don't even know that they're interested within STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and maths, um, and exposing them to women, but also in industry and loads of opportunities. And it was specifically STEM, you were trying to cover more than just technology? Absolutely, yeah. So then we saw, you know, problems with physics and engineering and some of the other fields, there's, there's still under-representation. So we try and, and present a holistic view of all of that and show mm -hmm. girls that there are opportunities across the whole of it. I was in tears, you know, watching them on stage, saying what they were saying, and I was like, no one's taking them seriously, why has no one funded them, you know? If they were slightly different, we'd be hailing them as the next billionaires and millionaires, and someone would have whisked them off to a flat somewhere and, you know, put them up. So it was almost like, you know, someone needs to take them seriously, and someone needs to help them think outside of the box, which I think were Kira's um, words. So Outbox Incubator is now a result of that. And are you kind of after things that, you know, we were talking about it earlier today, the, the idea that we don't necessarily need another Snapchat, but we need to actually solve the challenges of the world. Are they kind of priorities for you? Um, absolutely. I think definitely presenting to the girls the fact that there are problems for them to solve. But I think for me, the, the bigger priority is just getting them together. And I think there's something in strength in numbers, but also in that confidence in knowing that you're not, you know, the, just the only 17-year-old that's working on these kind of things, that there are others that are going through the same issues of maybe having to deal with, with exams, having to talk to investors, having to work on experiments, and knowing that you've got kind of... Um, confidence in that community and you've got someone else that you can talk to who understands what you're going through. I wouldn't have started coding if I didn't go to Coder Dojo and basically like Coder Dojo is brilliant. And did you meet many other young girls there at Coder Dojo? Um, well it's growing, you know, some dojos have less, some dojos have more, but in my dojo they have a girls dojo so it's basically they first the girls go into the girls dojo and then they go into the mixed dojo so it kind of it's a starter and tell us a little bit more about why you're so keen on steam rather than stem well the art added into the stem brings in the creativity side so it's you know the ideas the creativity the design all of that brings it into stem so you you know it brings the ideas yeah that went down well people like that idea <laughs> Tell me a little bit, Lauren, about kind of what you, I mean, it, you're very young to be deciding, I'm not suggesting you would be deciding, but at the moment, what do you think you'd like to do, ultimately? Um, I'm, not really, I'm not really sure, but I like Emer and Kira. I'd like to start my own business. I only realised yesterday it's four million uh, yeah. of you here, yeah. and you're very heavily represented, uh, at least within the house and within the applications. Um, so we're, you know, we're, we're proud, we're happy. We've got Mary and the team as well, who's very, yeah. you know, feeling very proud of being Irish um, at that moment. Um, but it's it's something I'm not quite sure. I was asking, I saw Rhonda um, yesterday, who's yeah. a, who's a previous winner of um, BTYSE, and I was saying, is it something in the water? And I and I wonder whether it is something around, you know, the community of, of girls, the fact that you, you're quite well connected, you use Twitter, um, and you kind of seek out uh, other like minds, it's like, you know, birds of a feather flocking together. So I think there's definitely something in that, but also in the publicity that the girls have got, you know, since winning Google Science Fair, it's definitely been um, a beacon or something to say, hey, you can be like us, you can do this, where no normal girls just like you who are doing these fantastic things and removing a little bit maybe some of the stigma or the perception around what young scientists, scientists in general look like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which we don't have as much in the UK, sadly, and, and in other places around the EU. It's, we've not quite yet had those kind of beacons, those younger role models coming up and showing what it is to be a, a STEMette, a 21st century girl in STEM. The year after we won the BT Young Scientist, the next year we had um, massive entries into the BT Young Scientist. And we had people who were still in sixth class um, looking at how they could enter it and wanting to know how they'd come up with a project idea before they even entered the school. So I think um, something that I think Kira says a lot is that success breeds success. So, you know, when they saw us, I suppose, um, winning the competition, it kind of made them feel like maybe they could do it too. So there was an increase then in the people actually doing science projects for the BT Young Scientists, which was really great. Fantastic. That's brilliant. Yeah, and I think 52% of the projects, or 56 it might have been, were by young women. Am I right? Last year? Yeah, I think, I think there was, I think it was nearly half and half women yeah. and, well, girls and boys, which yeah. is actually really different for a science fair, and yeah. it's really great. Like, there wasn't even that representation in the Google Science Fair, so really Ireland is leading the way in that yeah. sense. 
Sorry, for those of you who aren't from Ireland, the BT Young Scientist Fair, is, it's on every year. It's absolutely huge, and that's where you guys started out. Um, and Lauren will be having a go, I'm sure, in a few years as well. <laughs> so, Lauren, what about you? Uh, do you find that you're treated differently at school? or you're, uh, What do your friends think of what's going on and you being on the Late Late Show and everything? Well, when I was going on the Late Late Show, they were all over me. <laughs> <laughs> they were jealous, no? Not really, no. Good, 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 good. So they were happy for you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and did they all watch? Um, well, some of them weren't allowed to stay up that late and they <laughs> watched the players. But you were. <laughs> <laughs> That's thanks to your great mum and dad. Uh, they're very proud of you. And do you think that you can be sort of an example and an, an inspiration for the other kids of your age? You know, do you well, talk to them about trying to get into it as well? Well, yes, I'm trying to encourage like people in our, my class. Like, there are some people who've come up to me from like third class, fifth class, saying, "You know, I've started Clojure Dojo." Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, that's fantastic. So they've seen your example and they've gone, "I must, uh, I must try this out. Well, it's not yeah. too late." <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. She's an inspiration for like older people like me as well too though, I mean, like it wouldn't just be younger people, I mean, <laughs> you know, let's, let's be fair here. <laughs> so what we're doing, um, you're right, the target was young women, mm -hmm. um, and again, reading the research and looking at all of it, it was a lot around them having a, almost a safe environment to be able to test these things out yeah. and try these things which you don't necessarily have if it's a mixed environment, um, and not to stereotype at all, but sometimes it can be quite intimidating if you're the only girl in your computer science class or if you're the only girl in a particular um, scenario. Um, and I, I know that wasn't something that held me back, but you know, not everyone is as stubborn like I was when I was younger. So it is about opening it up to those girls who aren't maybe of that um, inclination, but showing them and making it a girl's thing. So, um, we held the Girls Hack Ireland um, in March here at DCU, and that was uh, about 100 girls between 15 and 17. And in that room, in that moment, it felt like a girls' thing to be there hacking those websites, doing the HTML, doing some coding. So it's given them those kind of environments, which, like Lauren said, then gives them the confidence to then go on to mixed environments, where it, you know no one's going to intimidate you because you've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, probably won a prize, <laughs> and you know you, you know a little bit more than than everyone else that's that's involved. Um, so, so that's why we that's why we do it, and, and we're not at all advocating that girls only, yeah. you, know, should, you, you know, in industry it's not like that. You don't have girls only tech companies that like we did in the 60s, but we don't we don't have them now. So it's it's about giving the girls that confidence at that young age, um, which is something that if I look back at my career, having done GCSEs when I was 10 and then A levels when I was 11, it's something that you know it still gives me the confidence when I go into rooms, when I'm in meetings, whatever I'm doing that. If I could do that at that young age, if I could achieve that, then there's nothing that's going to stand in my way. And it's something that I hope, you know, that the girls get as they come up. You know, as Lauren is now, I don't, I don't think anyone would disagree with me that if anyone ever said you couldn't do anything, you'd, you'd tell them where to go, really. Yeah. Um, so it's about giving the girls that and, and empowering them and giving them that confidence to pursue whatever it is, whether it's STEM or whether it's something else is completely up to them, yeah. but at least being able to consider it and feel comfortable enough to say, you know, that was something I could do, but I've decided this is something else. And do, do you mind telling us a little bit about your background? For those who don't know, you started everything very, very early on. I did, I did. So when I was, you're 10 now, right? Yeah. yeah. So when I was 10, when I was Lauren's age, I did um, two GCSEs, one in ICT, one in maths. And GCSE exams are what we have in the UK at the end of high school. So you normally do them when you're 16. So I passed both of those when I was 10. And then when you've done your GCSEs, you do your A-levels. So I did my A-level in computer science when I was 11. Um, <laughs> that old thing. Um, and, and, you, and you clap, and it's bittersweet, though, for me, because I'm a little bit older than 11 now. And in, in, in that time, no other girl has come up and, and done the same thing. So for really? me, it's, no, it's fantastic that I'd be the, I was the first, but it's, it's a bit lonely. Yeah, I can imagine. And did you get a lot of support, or was it, was it very lonely at the time? Was it very? Sorry. Lonely at the time. Um, so it's, I've never felt, I mean, I'm joking about it being lonely. It, it was, I got a lot of support, and I had a really uh, enabling environment where, you know, I talk about my dad quite a lot. My, my dad 
didn't mind that I was taking apart the VCR and putting things back together in the house. He wasn't like, no, go and play with your Barbie. It was kind of like, you do what you got to do, kid, yeah. and I'm here to support you. Um, so I was very, very fortunate in that. And even in some of my teachers, um, never forget Mr. Davis, actually, who was my year three teacher, who kind of used to get us to do maths competitions before school and kind of saw something in me and was like, yeah, this girl kind of gets this. Um, so I did have a very enabling environment and great parents. Um, and I guess that's part, partly why, for me, on a personal level, I run STEMETS, because it's it, just in case you don't have the parents yeah. that have the whereabouts, have the capability to support you in that way, um, you know, here's an environment for us to help educate your parents, but also give you uh, opportunities and open you up to, to the industry. What we've put together is a program that doesn't just focus on the founder, for example, or not just on the money, but focuses quite a lot on the support. And so we've put the demo day in the middle, whereas normally you'd kind of go through the whole program and then pitch at the end. The girls are going to be pitching in the middle. So it's almost like we kind of have this crescendo and then we help them come back down again. Um, but also the mix of funding and support is something that's quite unique that you wouldn't normally do with children. So kind of if you look internationally, you either give them money at the end of the competition or you give them the support like they've had at MIT. It's not been that you kind of come in together, you pitch for the money, and then you, you form a team together as part of that program. Um, so we've, we've kind of set it up slightly differently, and it might be that over time we refine the model ever so slightly, um, but we've also put the cement spin on it as well. So, you know, we, are, we have our principle, it's the three Fs. It's always free, it's always fun, there's always food. You know, we've, we've made sure that that runs through the, the program as well. So a lot of the girls that applied um, didn't actually read the small print, the small print, and realise that it's completely free. So we're paying for all of their flights to come in. We're paying for all of that. We're paying for literally everything for them while they're with us. We're taking care of the safeguarding. So we just want industry really to be there to come and help inspire them. And so that you'll have visiting sort of industry people coming in and telling. Absolutely, them? yes. So Martha Lane Fox, for example, is coming in the first week. Oh, wow. We've got loads of different people that are coming to stop by to run sessions. Um, Salesforce will be doing a lot of them. Intel have signed up to do them. So there are a lot of, a lot of big names that are going to be there, as well as entrepreneurs and people that have founded their own businesses. Um, so definitely that's the feel that we want, where it's, you know, we throw as much as we can at the girls. Um, and, you know, they enjoy the company of each other, but also these women. And there's going to be a bit of, there'll be a little bit of magic almost in the air and having all those different elements um, together in the summer in London. Do you think it's important that young voices are heard at oh, policy yeah, level? Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, I think especially when we're going to be going through university and we'll probably be going into these industries, it'd be nice to, for us to be able to kind of shape them, I suppose. So um, it's really good to have a say. And I think in a way it's a shame that not more young people have a say. You know, I feel like people at this stage will listen to what I'll say because, you know, I won a few competitions. But I think that everyone really should be listened to, like not just someone who has had a success story because everyone maybe wants to go somewhere, has no opinion on it. So I think sometimes uh, we need to listen to other people as well. You know, I don't know that much about stuff. So I think we need to listen to those as well who don't have a voice all the time. So I would say, um, especially for science projects, because like I said, I would be more in science, is just ask questions. And I think to really get a true flavour for what science is like, that you really have to do your own project outside of a textbook. And just, as well, in class, just ask silly questions. Ask the most random questions about different science things and just debate them, because that's when you really see if you, if you like science or not. Lauren? Um, I think to encourage, basically, projects and videos is definitely... Very good. Anne-Marie? I'd say don't be afraid of... of making mistakes like things will go wrong you'll write the whole code and the semicolon won't be there and the whole thing will fall in fall down in front of you and um, don't be disheartened everyone has that everyone experiences it um, so don't be afraid